welcome to Project Geospatial. I'm Mason Rothman. And I'm Adam Simmons. We'll do that a little bit differently. Uh, so in this episode, uh, we're going to talk about drones. What are we going to talk about drones? Well, uh, as I uh, informed everybody on last episode, we uh, I have a new Mavic 2 Zoom. I say new, but I've had this for about four or five, uh, well, I'll say about four months now. And so I've had a chance to play around with it, fly it around a little bit, and learn a lot about uh, the rules, regulations, and all the fun stuff that you can do with it just as a recreational right. hobbyist, but also some of the things you could get into if you want to transition into a uh, commercial license as well. So right. we'll talk a little bit about that. Yeah, so that, that's from DG, DGI. Huh? Yeah, okay. the DGI Mavic 2, and I have the Zoom edition. The uh, the um, the Pro is uh, the only difference between the two of the camera. The aircraft are the same. It's basically the same aircraft. The cameras are... Uh, after from a aftermarket standpoint, in theory, you can interchange them. You okay. Can do your own little D right. DIY work. Um, but other than that, uh, what's yeah. the cost difference between those two models? Or how many? Uh, a couple hundred dollars, couple actually. Hundred for so the HD camera is a lot more expensive, and it does some really good shots. Um, right. But the zoom does as the well. The zoom has an optical. The, it has actual optical zoom on it. That's why I want it. I want to actually zoom in on the things. I didn't just want to take these awesome good stills or awesome, you know, HD. Sure, cameras. you want to be able to yeah, identify and I, things. And I was a little bit split on it because I wanted to get a great camera on the drone. Um, but I, I, you know, being a be, being a imagery guy myself from from Air Force days, I yeah. like the idea of. Uh, being able to zoom in on things. Right, know? right. right. Who, who doesn't? Enhance. Yeah, right? Enhance, <laughs> zoom in. Not just fly closer. I want to kind of zoom in on that's it. Right. Anyway, um, so I want to talk about a couple of different things that's going on um, with this thing. So let's talk about a little quick, quickly some of the specs with the uh, the Mavic 2 Zoom. Sure. So you have the specs up the side. I do not have them all memorized. Right. Yeah, we, we went over these before. This sucker can go up to 20,000 feet. So ignoring legal restrictions for a second, uh, just looking at the, the actual capabilities of the drone, yes, right. it can go up to 20,000 feet or 9,000 meters. Um, and that is that is significant. So You're not going to see it at that point, folks. Well, with that said, so the battery life is maximum of? Uh, uh, 30 minutes, 31 minutes. If, 31 minutes. Yeah. So I imagine, though, if, assuming you can get to maximum battery life, uh, you would, if you did go to 20,000 feet, it'd be like a straight up and straight down. Oh, it, takes some, down. it takes some time to get up there. Um, I've not gone that high myself. Uh, just to just to kind of reiterate, the legal restrictions on the drones, uh, for the most part, is a 400-foot ceiling without special right. approval. So uh, for, for most areas, there are some areas the closer you get to certain places, it goes down to 350, and we'll get into that in a minute. Uh, but some more specifications. So we did mention uh, some of the camera capabilities. So this specific drone uh, has some unique camera uh, specs on it. So this is a capable of 4K video. Yeah, 4K video at 30 frames per second, and then you take it down to 2K, which uh, is quite decent, actually, but that's when you get your 60 frames per second, if it really matters to you. But um, to be able to go to 20,000 feet, zoom in on an well, object, it, so pretty decent. Let, I mean, let me tell you, from even a couple hundred feet up, zooming in, I mean, zooming in helps but there's no way you're going to see anything when you zoomed in at 20,000 feet. Uh -huh. So, so zooming in does do helps you out from a couple hundred feet up. It's not that great of a zoom. I wonder where we could get some footage at 20,000 feet of, uh, of it zooming in on something. We need to look for that somewhere so we can see what it would look well, like. You want to take a regular uh, or a larger size UAV and do that? No, I'm saying somebody else flying this because no, we're not no, going to no. break the rules. But no, if somebody else does, no, 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 that's not. The camera, the camera, like I said, the camera, the zoom is not capable of doing anything special at that height anyway. So um, even even with the, as good of a camera it is, it's I'm not even say it's really great for mapping at that that uh, that height. So this this camera is specifically designed, I would say, can handle about a thousand feet or below. Um, is good enough. So anyway, um, yeah. So, so impressive, anymore? impressive specifications here. I mean, really, this is this just rivals a lot of things. Oh, back out there. to the battery for a second. The battery does last. Uh, you're seeing 31 uh, minutes max. minutes. That's without any type of uh, winds and or, going at 15.5 miles an hour. Well, and that's so if you just hover. That's making maximum use of your your battery life. Um, personally, I've not taken this thing over twenty minutes per flight. 
uh, that's when it gets about 50% ladder life. But the maximum I think based off of that can get to for my drone based off what I've been doing is 25 minutes. So let's so. let so when you do those, it, it has these, I'm gonna jump here a little bit, but it has these where you can do flight paths oh, yeah. and whatnot. And cause so can you set the speed in there? Cause it was saying 31 minutes at 15.5 miles an hour. Uh, yeah, so there's certain flight modes and I guess in a future episode, we'll get into more of that when you take some screenshots or yeah. maybe I'll do a screen share of the, the phone itself during a flight. But uh, there's, you can have this thing. It's really automated. The, the drone stabilizes itself. Uh, you don't have to worry about, you know, it's a lot of the cheaper drones. You have to, like, control all aspects of yeah, keeping yeah, it stable. Yeah, yeah. Uh, this one doesn't do that. But you also have a series of flight plans you can do, such as, uh, hey, I wanted to lock on an object. So I have some object detection soft, um, algorithms plugged into the software. So you can highlight an object, like a person or a car, say, hey, I want to track this object or whatever. And then I want to you know, I want to do an orbit around this object uh, or do some various camera tricks. And they have some plugged in camera tricks you can do with the drone. It'll move in, move out, and do some things, even with some cool things with the zoom to make them uh, uh, make these amazing special effects. Mm -hmm. Because the next drone series above this, the uh, I think it's the Inspire, uh, two. Uh, anyway, that drone is a lot more expensive. This Who drone, makes that? Is that DJI, DJI as well? Yeah. Okay. So that drone goes. Oh, by the way, this I think this one goes like forty-five miles an hour. Mm. Uh, the Inspired goes like fifty-five or something like that. But that's the one they use professionally. That's like a five grand drone they'll use just to track cars. You know, do do car commercials. And right. Like right. So so they're not too far off. But you imagine the differences between what you have to do from. Um, uh, you know what kind of capabilities you need plugged in so this is literally meant for photography and uh you know amateur video photography right mm -hmm. yeah, so sure. great for that and this is great to see this technology evolve like this and it's not the first time that we've seen something like this where it starts where there's a lot of investment on the dod or government side into drones etc and then you see it go out into the commercial world and the excitement and the money's poured into it from that point and then it just keeps expanding where you can see from this the specs on this are mind-blowing it, it is and yeah. I'll, I'll say yes it is a chinese made drone this specific one that is a caveat i was going to mention too actually. yeah no and you know i i wanted to mess around i said the other one is the uh the parrots i think is the higher rated U.S. drones, mm -hmm. you have a lot of third-party stuff out there, and that's a hard to get into. And and I'd need to go do an inventory across um, what else is out there from the different brands that are more established. Right. Uh, but Parrot is one of the more known U.S. ones, and I can tell you from the reviews, it just doesn't come as close as uh, what the capabilities of the DJI's, uh, what they have plugged into from the automation. Mm -hmm. um, that's involved in this thing, the, the hands off. Yeah. DJI is just way, way ahead. And what I care about is a geospatial guy is, uh, is the metadata on board, what I'm able to extract. And that's what we're going to get into next. So let me, uh, plug well, in. that metadata on board is also with uh, people. Why, why we're giving you that, that small warning on the, uh, the, the Chinese government. Uh, well, and, and we so do dive into the metadata. Yeah. Right. So, um, so let's dive into the metadata a little bit. Um, so flipping the screens here a little bit. So the first thing I'm going to talk about, well, before I talk about what I did, talk about air map real quick. Air map is what I use to uh, look at the different airspace in the area, see where it's legally can fly. And I call this a starting point. It's not, it doesn't have all the rules and regulations, uh, but it does give you a really, I'd say a good 80, 75, 80% of where you can. Now fly. we're seeing a, a blurb of colors here, Adam, explain the colors. Yeah. So let's, I have this zoomed into the Washington DC area and more Northern Virginia side. So the couple things red is this red giant thing is the Washington DC restricted zone. So nothing can fly. No drones can fly into this Washington DC airspace. It's not a joke folks. Don't yeah, do yeah. Right. Yeah. Don't, don't go in there. They I don't speak from experience, but I, I've read about folks that have, and I yeah. feel sorry for them. So anyway, um, let's go into more of a, more of a, okay area the okay area so you got the washing dulces this is giant blue area and what i like about drone map now is when i zoom in they have where um zoom in a little bit closer a little bit closer so when i get into the area such as here in ashburn um what this should do is give me how high what the ceiling is for each individual grid up there it is. there we go so um, those are in feet this is yep 400 feet ceiling heights and then when i get closer to some of these grids you can see it's 350. oh as, they, as, as it gets closer to the air ah, or you. if it's in within the flight path of the uh, runway takeoff takeoff uh, landing or landing sure yeah. um 
So, so obviously you have to be aware of that. I don't fly within there. And now the, this orange circle is Leesburg airport. Now, typically you would call into the airport and say, Hey, give, um, uh, and apply for, uh, a permission or mm -hmm. submit your flight plan, et cetera, uh, even as a recreational drone user, uh, especially if you're flying within the circle. So you're, you know, warning any small aircraft that you're going to be in the area. However, I did read on Leesburg airport is like, Hey, as long as you're flying within FAA restrictions of, you know, 400 feet or below, and some of it's even 300 feet or below, um, uh, you know, at Leesburg airport, for example, for the Ashburn area, uh, you don't have to fill out the form. Just don't stay within that, stay within the actual, Ashford yeah, what are those area. other little uh, uh, yellowed off or oranged off areas here? What are so these? the uh, the orange areas are, there's various things. Mostly there are schools. There's a bunch of schools. There's hospitals. So if I click on one of these, uh, one sense. of these is a hospital. Don't want you guys hitting air helicopters, please. So there's a school. The hospital is right here. Well, I, I know about the hospital. Um, some of these are just fa uh, farms with their own little personal air airports. Oh, but it's registered at the same time. That's yeah. Um, so Goose Hunt Farm, they have their own little air, probably a little, um, their drones or helicopters to take up the monitor of the farm, or et cetera, crop testing. So that's why they have it more restricted. Um, schools. Middle so you, school. you don't fly over schools. You basically don't oh, fly over so. the orange areas. Yeah. Anyway, air maps, a good, a, a good starting point for anybody trying to get a now rough idea of where they can fly. Don't fly in any red zones. Uh, this river, Potomac River is national park. You're not supposed to fly in any national parks at all. Um, and uh, national forests are apparently uh, completely okay to fly in as long as you're flying FAA restrictions and aren't interfering with any type of like uh, event, like a wildfire, things like right. that. Don't, don't fly, don't interfere with those things. Um, but national forests are okay. Let's see. Oh, the, one national, more, the national park river thing is one more thing silly. about the air map, though. So once again, it only takes you up to about 75, 80 percent of the what you want to look for right. in the area. What it doesn't list is a lot of the state and local restrictions that are uh, more park specific. So I look for a lot of parks because okay. that has a lot of open space. I can just play around with the drone. Uh, and so you want to look for so you want to look for county regional and state park restrictions. Gotcha. And each state has their own um, restrictions. Each county has their own restrictions. For example, Fairfax County, I think I was reading and I have to double check on this. Uh, Fairfax County is completely legal to fly in most of their parks as long as you're flying FAA restrictions. Um, the problem is most of Fairfax County is within the uh, <laughs> red zone of the Washington DC corridor. So they're like, yeah, we're okay to fly. You're okay to fly. And they're kind of like, you know, trying to adhere to uh, be more friendly about it, right. but they're like, ha ha ha, but you're, you're within the red zone. So yeah, you yeah. can't do it anyway. Yeah. Uh, Loudoun County is, I was, I called the parks, I think it was the deputy director at parks and for the, uh, for the County. And he said that uh, their parks, as long as you're fine FAA, you're, you're, you're okay. You're cool. going to go. There are some parks within Loudoun County. It says no drones allowed. I still abide for that just because I don't, I don't want to cause any. Always follow the rules folks. Yeah. And, and so around here is a lot more tricky to follow the regulations. Oh, and by the way, you always have to, don't forget to register your drone with um, the FAA. Uh, that's another important factor. In it. Anyway, just remember there are resources out there. They'll help you um, get you most of the way to understanding what the drones laws are. Just don't rely on any one source. Right. Uh, after you get a rough idea of where to fly, check out those local or, or um, local your local restrictions are from those actual government websites or the the establishment. And if you're buying on private property, make sure you call the guy up. And make sure because it's okay. this this for sure for somebody that's a first time flyer or a new flyer, this can be quite intimidating with all the you know the the, the loopholes and the things that you got to check. You got well, you got to be on your, your. It is, and if you look at kind of a little bit further out, it's not as bad. I mean, around the cities. It's not as bad. You got a lot of orange zones for a lot of the small, um, airports, smaller airports and yeah. things. But the more you go into more open U.S., it's really not that bad at all. So it's our area is really crowded. We live in a special area. The more you go, go around people, that's the problem. So, um, and so I, stay away from people is what we're telling you on this yeah. podcast. Folks. So the next thing I want to talk about is uh, where do you go to extract some of your drone data? It's uh, what do you mean extract the so, data? So let's say I, I do a I do a flight. And uh, so parallel to my flight, uh, my drone has a log file that records with every flight it does. Uh, also, um, this specific drone doesn't record metadata on the video itself. What it does is record an SRT file parallel to the log file. Um, so the SRT file 
is made with every video that I make with the drone. So basically okay. it's geospatial data and camera data, such as gimbal or focal, focal point of the camera itself, parallel to the, um, uh, the video itself. So you can take those files and do something with it geospatially. Now, I don't have the time just to go number crunch and do all the math stuff. Sure. So I look for a lot of free applications to help me out. One of the biggest free applications that I use is called airdata.com. Airdata.com is kind of cool because I can upload my flights and yeah, for free, you can upload and store up to a hundred flights and it can, and, and, and by the way, this will help you realize just from your log files, which are stored on your phone, when you hook up the drone, um, how much data is truly on these things and it collects quite a bit. So those are some good looking uh, circles there. You yeah. So add. this is part of the orbital stuff I was doing around the neighborhood. Now I'll, I'll tell you what I was doing there in a minute, but you can see I do flight time. It can do height, altitude, speed, and actually it gets into the power settings. So how efficient the battery was. It's really Get out of here. Really? That's yeah. in the log file too. Huh? That's in the log file. Excellent. Uh, and uh, sensor controls. Uh, let's see what else. The way you can, now this is not in the log file, but it does show the weather for that specific area and how windy it was, just like, especially if you're trying to plan ahead there. That's great, actually. It'll, anyway, there's a lot of data in these log files. Now, combined with the, the uh, uh, what was I saying, the, uh, the other file, the SRT files, the SRT files has all the Campbell gimbal information. So if you, what, you're, what you're trying to do with that is if you have the location of the drone and you're trying to get the actual location of the camera, mm -hmm. where, where you actually shot oh, the image sure. of the camera, basically the, the center point, the geo, the geo point. reference point of the actual image itself. Yeah. And so if you can use the camera's gimbal and focal point and all that to triangulate based off of the location and altitude, where the, uh, where the, where the actual point of the, uh, the geo reference, the, uh, the images. The, the image, yeah. Yeah. Sure. So that gets, uh, this, knowing this, and so I can, I, I can, I, what I do is I upload the log files into this application because what it allows me to do is convert the log files into something more usable. Oh, KML, cool. GPX, and CSV. So I love this. So what it gives me a free need? application to kind of convert that and uh, check out, you know, what 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 data I'm collecting, even the flight plans. The other thing I like about this uh, uh, this the, the flight specifically is if I go into the media here. Is it in here? So, sorry, that's one of the images I took. I'm trying to find, um, there is a section in here where it'll show me, okay, I, I don't have it set up. It's okay. But what does it show you? So, so it was actually showing me where all, I took all the pictures on the, um, on the drone itself. And on the flight path, it actually showed me what angle I was taking the pictures of. What, oh, what that's a cool angle. visualization. Yeah, and actually where all the where all the pictures, how the pictures were taken, etc. So I'll try to find some screenshots later of that. But that's it was this it the it doesn't just show the flight path; it shows where all the picture angles were taken on the map too. So it's very powerful. Anyway, I, I downloaded the KML and throw that in the keep all my files on Google Earth. It's pretty cool to see. The next thing I'll show is um, I've taken those log files in combination with some of the videos, and I stumbled on an application called hive mapper hive mapper.com is really cool because it's typically used for i mean you can think of it with late uh, lidar data mm -hmm. uh, but it'll take your videos that you've taken and convert them into 3d maps so the more coverage you have and the more accurate angles you have etc and, and maybe it's best if i show you an example sure, most of these sure. video files didn't turn out well because i didn't have the right data uploaded. is that what those reds mean exactly so the green ones were correctly processed so i took that of the neighborhood i uh, so i flew up and i created this 3d map just with the drone data and this is about three minutes of coverage of a use when i just orbited the neighborhood and the uh, this 3D hive mapper created this 3D map based off of my video footage. Yeah, let's, can we zoom in on some cars or anything else? Yeah, we can. Oh, look so, at that. So you can see it gets a little bit fuzzy up close. But this is only after how, ma how much video? Two or three minutes of coverage. <laughs> That's unbelievable. Two or three minutes and you got this 3D? I got this 3D map, yeah. Wow. So now what's frustrating, I say frustrating, uh, and I don't have a good application to read the exported file because it exports the file, this 3D map, as a um, as a .las file, which is Where's a LiDAR that? file. Oh, okay. Yeah. So it actually exports as a LiDAR file. 
Now I don't have any really great applications to read that file out, so I can't really do anything outside of this application with it. So I wish there were some additional 3D formats that it would do. Sure. Um, I'm not a fan of uh, 3D PDFs, mm -hmm. or, or but no, that might here. be an option yeah. for this, uh, or maybe even a 3D dot 3DS, so I can export them as a 3D model itself to import them into 3D printers, or oh yeah, that's uh, a great call, or, or Google SketchUp, or some some other 3D modeling application that's typical for the 3D community, not just lidar stuff. We'll play around with different software, et cetera, and let you know. Yeah, so I can't wait to play around with this more and, and check it out. So the right, latest, yeah, Hive Mapper, that's pretty neat. Yeah, right? yeah, we're we're overviewing some of these, uh, but there's a lot of capabilities and details related to this too. So we'll see. Uh, we'll hopefully we'll see more what we can do with it. Anyway, um, next thing, I'll, last thing I'll show you is a quick little video coverage. So that same that same uh, 3D map that I created. This is the footage that I took, and this is one of the this orbits. is the footage it used along with the data. To uh, do a three minute orbit around the center point of the gazebo here on the middle. And do you know if in that 3D map of detailed data or what, what's, uh, what's added in there exactly? I do not know what they use in the background because okay. I can tell when I, uh, when I did tilt the whole thing on an angle, you can do see um, the, you can see terrain data in the background. You can see other, on the base map. There. Oh yeah, look at that. Yep. So there is. Yep, that's there is. And you can see the neighborhood as that's kind of tilt because we're on a hill. Yeah, sure. There you go. So anyway, back to the here's the video quick. So the video is not really that interesting. We right. have some interesting videos. He parallel parked over there on the right and didn't screw on the first attempt. Parallel parked. Yeah, I don't want to get oh, any no. neighbors in trouble. I uh, <laughs> or no, out. no one's parked illegally or anything like that. Um, at least not that I'm aware of. Yeah, I don't know. That guy might be over the line there. <laughs> you might have some people parked the wrong way, but I'm not trying to get neighbors in trouble. Yeah, right. Uh, so either way. Don't um, use it for that, folks. Don't use your drone to get your neighbors in trouble. So this is pretty powerful. I got some great footage. I've uh, flown this thing over 50 times now with just some of them are quick minute flights just to experiment with. Uh, yeah, the moving data. vehicle really brings it to life because otherwise it's just kind of a spin around of, you know, like you said, like one of those 3D PDFs, et cetera. But the moving vehicles really add to it. That's awesome, man. Yeah. So I can't wait to see more. Maybe we'll uh, show more stuff and oh, get, for sure. we'll dive into more applications yeah. and hopefully get a hold of some of these companies. Well, it's process. cool that we both have kind of ba drone-ish backgrounds from the Air Force, et cetera. And now that we get to play with all uh, some of this stuff, you know, in the commercial world. And uh, yeah, it's a lot of fun. Yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll process. Uh, we'll get a hold of some of these drone companies that process the data and maybe we'll bring them on for interviews. Oh, that'd be great, actually. Uh, yeah. But I can't wait to show more examples of what this thing can do because I think, oh, um, Maybe preview for next time. I uh, did take a couple photo spheres with this, and they turned out incredible. Okay. So it's you know think of yeah, if you're familiar with the photosphere at all, it's a 360 image, and this thing takes about I don't know 12, 10, 12 images, and it moves itself around and it stitches it all together, and it came out amazing. Yeah. Made, it had me incredible detail. Yeah. So I uh, took a number of those and. Uh, Hey, I can't wait to do more of those too. Good job, DGI. Anyway, uh, that concludes our topic for this episode. Yeah, that was great. That was a lot of fun. Absolutely. Uh, I'm Adam Simmons. And I'm Mason Rothman. See you next time.